Hi, we're going to be looking at the operation of a NOR based SR flip flop. To do this I have the truth table for a NOR gate and the truth table for the flip flop itself. Looking at the flip flop we have two NOR gates, we have two inputs, the reset input and the sent input and we have two outputs Q and not Q and we see that Q is fed to its opposite gate input and not Q similarly is fed to the reset gate input there. We're going to start with a situation where we have a logic 1 on the reset input and a logic 0 on the set input. Under this situation the reset input with a 1 here forces its output to be 0. We can see that from the truth table. So if we've got a 1 on any of the inputs its output must be 0. Therefore Q at 0 is fed back to the opposite input on the set gate and with the set input at 0 we have two zeros, a 0 here and a 0 there and the truth table tells us therefore that the bottom gate not Q must be given an output of 1. And when we look at the truth table we have a 0 on S, 1 on R and looking down the not Q column we see that it must be set on. The next situation we'll look at is when both S is at 0 and R is at 0. What we've done here is we've taken the reset from a 1 to a 0. So we have a 0 here but not Q is still at 1 because we've not changed the set input. Therefore, the reset gate, top gate, Q, must stay at 0. What this means is that once we have an output on not Q, for example, it doesn't matter what we do to the reset input. It can be a 1 or a 0. It doesn't matter. It has no effect on this output. The only way we can affect not Q is by changing S. So we're going to look at that now. We're going to look at the final situation where we have a 1 on the S input and a 0 on the R input there. Under this situation with a 1 coming into the bottom NOR gate here it forces its output not Q to go to 0. Not Q at 0 is fed to the top gate input and with R at 0, the truth table tells us the output must be 1. And if you look at that situation in the flip-flop truth table, we can see that Q has changed to 1 and not Q has gone to 0. The final situation, which must be avoided, is when we have a 1 and a 1 on both inputs. When you've got a 1 on the top input and a 1 on the bottom input, the truth table tells us that both outputs will be forced to 0. Under this condition, your flip-flop simply will not operate. Over here is, is a little um, graphical illustration of what happens and you can follow that yourself. I've just talked through um, the sequence of how the flip-flop operates and why we must make sure for this flip-flop we never have a 1 and a 1 on the input. Finally we're going to look at a, a very quick simulation. First thing I want to look at, we, we've got uh, the two gates set up, we've got two LEDs here and I've got an oscilloscope there and I'm going to show you one of the issues that you might encounter if you try to operate this flip-flop with both of the inputs at zero to start with. When this happens, you're going to set up a, a series of very rapid oscillations because both gates will be racing each other um, and effectively it may never settle down. You may have just made an oscillator, for example. So what you're going to want to do is, in your design, you're going to want to make sure that you set up a situation whereby either R or S, but not both, is made at the same time. When we look at that situation, at the moment I've got R set up here, 
so R is on, I'm going to do the sim and we see that the not Q, the bottom one is the not Q output is on, the LED is lit. I change R to zero again here now we we don't get oscillations because we're already um, set up properly we see that by opening R it has no effect on the output, it remains made the final situation is when we make S here and we can see that the top LED Q has now come on and if we try to make R again finally right at the very end we see that both outputs are forced to zero as predicted by the truth table. Okay, that's about it.